When you think of New York, you probably think of places like this. Massive bridges or glittering towers made of steel and concrete. But New York also has a wilder side. The city's 8 million residents live alongside more than 600 different species of animals. And in this series, we're going to be taking a closer look at some of New York's wilder residents. This is Wild New York. My name is Ben, and I'm an amateur naturalist and animal lover. Oh, and there he goes. Join me and my friend Katie as we journey around New York City and discover a little bit more about the wildlife that shares our home. Surviving in New York City is no easy task. It's loud, crowded, and expensive. But there's one creature that manages to make it look easy, even fashionable. Vulpus vulpus, more commonly known as the red fox. These clever creatures have survived hunting, deforestation, and mass influxes of human populations. But today, their numbers are dwindling, and few New Yorkers have ever seen one. What secrets are they hiding? Is it too late to save their population? And can we live safely alongside them? We're gonna answer these questions and more today. The red fox is one of the most widespread predators on the planet. Despite being a rare sighting in the United States' largest city, red foxes can be found across the northern hemisphere from North Africa to Canada. Following their introduction to Australia during colonization, red foxes quickly became dangerous to native bird and mammal species, not unlike other European colonizers. Too small to be a threat to humans, foxes have been treated as pests or hunted for their fur, closely intertwining their lifestyle with that of their human neighbors. It's the fur that makes the red fox most recognizable. Typically, it's a rusty brown yellow shade over most of the body, with a white underbelly and tip of the tail. Just like our friends the eastern gray squirrel, red foxes can have genetic mutations that alter the color of their fur, giving them shades of brown, gray, silver, and black. And this fur isn't just beautiful, it's also practical, serving as an insulator and protection against the elements. It's the fur that got the fox into trouble as an urban cohabitator. Their incredibly useful and durable pelts have been a mainstay in the fur industry as far back as memory goes, with stories of fox hunts in the annals of Alexander the Great in 350 BCE. Fortunately, the fox's natural cunning and large broods have helped them keep pace with human activity. Although they are similar in size to dogs, foxes are much lighter. Their bones weigh about 30% less than a similarly sized canine bone. On average, adults are between 18 and 35 inches in length, with tails that frequently measure more than half their total body length. Their weight has a fairly broad range, anywhere between 5 to 30 pounds. Female foxes, called vixens, are typically 15 to 20% smaller than males. Male foxes are known as dogs or tods. Foxes typically have litters between four and six young, called kits, but litters as large as 13 have been recorded. Coat color begins to change at around three weeks, from a dark fuzzy gray to the sleek burnt orange that gives the red fox its name. The red fox tends to stick to the outskirts of the city. Although they are skilled scavengers, they're also accomplished hunters. Areas that can accommodate a large home range like Fresh Kills and Van Cortlandt Parks offer plenty of room to stake a claim and lots of prey to chase. Although they are omnivores, their diet primarily consists of rodents. Woodchucks, deer mice, and Norway rats are frequently on the menu in the Big Apple. Red foxes tend to hunt in the early morning and late evening, especially in environments where there is a lot of human activity. Now that we know a little more about the foxes of New York City, let's see if we can find some in the wild. Foxes are shy by nature, but we're here in Casino Park near Flushing, Queens, a park that's famous for fox sightings. Let's go see what we can find. Tracking and filming foxes are not easy tasks. They're cunning predators that occupy a central link in the food chain, preying on smaller critters while hiding from larger animals and birds of prey. By taking note of their unique footprints as well as the scat they leave behind, you can narrow your hunt to a reliable area. Don't forget to keep an eye out for other sneaky creatures like stray cats and raccoons.
Well, we didn't find what we were looking for today, but that's the exciting part about being an amateur naturalist. Every time you step outside, there's something new to discover. Now that we've met the foxes in New York, it's time to ask the most important question. How do they fit into our ecosystem? If you live in a large city, there's probably a population of foxes closer than you think. And, unlike most of the animals we've met so far, they can be a threat to pets. Major cities like London and Berlin frequently host a population of foxes. The rodents that often threaten to overrun city parks make a ready and reliable source of prey, though foxes can and do forage through our refuse. Foxes can be aggressive, but instances of them attacking pets are rare. Given the chance to fight or flee, a fox will almost always attempt an escape. Their ability to outfox larger predators informed a cultural view of them as a noble pursuit with fox hunting following British colonization as a pastime into the Americas. While they can cause property damage with their foraging, they respond to non-lethal deterrents like trapping, odorizing their dens, and blocking up potential den sites. Foxes may seem aggressive and dangerous, but it's important to remember that predators are a key part of any healthy food web and ecosystem. If you can keep a close eye on your pets and property, that's more than enough to avoid any dangerous situations. And as always, remember, properly dispose of all of your trash. Never feed wildlife. And make sure you keep a safe distance whenever you're observing. If you follow these steps, we'll be able to bring New York City closer into harmony with nature. And make sure the Big Apple stays a wild New York.